Hello friends, my name is AJ and welcome to my channel. This is going to be a part two of the video on how to load JSON data into your iOS app. So in the last video, I actually went over using JSON from a file, a local file that is stored inside of the app and can be bundled with the app when shipping to the app store. This time I'm actually going to be loading JSON data directly from the internet. So it's going to be slightly different. I got a request um, from a user uh, who commented in the description of that video asking for how to do it on through online data. So I'll be showing you how to do that in this video. I'll be um, building on top of the exact same file that I was using in the last video. The last video will be linked in the description below, so definitely check that out. Um, first, the actual files are also on GitHub. Um, mainly the only thing that we did was that we created a table view which displayed the data onto a view controller. We uh, created a data model, which modeled the JSON data that we were actually bringing in so that we could store it properly in objects. And then we also created a data loader, which actually loaded the data. So all of those things are already part of the document and were explained in the last video. So I highly recommend checking that out before we get started here. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. All right, so I'm going to open up my um, load JSONs my load from JSON Xcode project from the last video. And you can see here that this is what my actual project looked like. If we go and kind of recap, first we had actual um, JSON data right here. And then we had the user data um, model, right? We used a struct to create this data model. And we modeled or we created a data model based on the actual uh, JSON, actual JSON we were trying to load. So whenever we load this JSON, it's going to store each of these individual um, JSON objects into um, an object, a user data object, right? This particular object has the fields here that are ma match up with the JSON here. So um, everything works together and we load this data using this data loader.swift file. And so if you look here, we have this um, load function, which loads in the data from the mydata.json file. And we use the bundle.main.url here, and then we do a do catch and we use JSON decoder to try to decode this data. Then we also have a, a sort function here, which sorted it based on the customer ID. The customer IDs are a specific item inside of each of our JSON objects. So we're going to go to data loader and I have my load function here. So this loads data from the file, but this time I want to load JSON data from the internet. So to do that, I'm actually going to create a new function. So I'm going to say func load from internet, just like this. And instead of loading now here, instead of calling the load function, which loads the data um, from my local file here, I'm at in my um, in my initialized in my initializer function up here, I called load in order to load data from the local file. Now I'm going to call load from internet instead. So this time it's going to load the data from the internet rather than load the data um, from a specific file. Okay, so now what do I need to do here? I need to actually have the link or the URL of where my data is coming from, where that JSON data is stored on the internet. So to do that, I'm going to create a URL, but I'm going to say if let, instead of just let URL, I'm gonna use if let URL. And again, just like down here, we used if let. If let basically allows you to safely unwrap the actual variable. So it's it will not be optional, like it will actually be initialized. The variable will be initialized using if let. And then the code inside of the if statement only runs if that particular variable was able to be created. So I'm going to do let URL, and then I'm going to create a URL object. And my URL is going to be a string. Now in my clipboard, uh, that's not correct. I will actually need to get the website or the actual link to my URL data. So I'm going to go over and open up Saf uh, Safari. All right. 
And in Safari, I have this thing called the called the JSON uh, placeholder right here, I believe. Actually, no, let's see where I had my link to. All right, right here. This is the link that I have to my JSON um, data, right? Uh, there's this myjson.com. If you go to myjson.com, you'll actually be able um, to get this information or you'll be able to put in your own JSON and kind of test this out. This is if, of course, you don't have an API already set up with actual um, JSON data. This is just a way to kind of test it out. So I'm going to copy my link over here and I'm actually going to paste that in right here. So this is the link or the URL that I'm getting the JSON data from. And then because this is an if statement, I have to have a um, body to my if statement right here by doing the open and close curly brackets, okay? And now from here, I need to actually get the data out of my URL. And in order to do this, I need to use URL session. So I'm going to type in URL session, which by itself should be, yeah, this itself is, a, is one thing. You're going to do URL session dot shared dot data task. Okay. And so what this does is this basically um, allows us to get the data from a specific URL and it's going to then um, provide us with a data response and error variable, right? The data variable is actually what we want to work with. And then the response and the error variable work with, you know, if there's an error, there'll be an error. And then if there's some sort of um, response, there'll also be a response. We're not going to worry too much about the response and error variable. Um, however, if you're actually deploying this app, you definitely want to make sure you handle some of those error cases in case there may be an error such as, you know, no connection to the internet, or maybe the link's broken, or maybe your um, URL is down for maintenance. So these are all things you have to keep in mind. And so now it says here with URL, well, I created a URL um, constant here. So I'm going to type in URL, right? And then I can do a body to this and I can use, there's data, response, and error, just like that. And now from here, I have three variables, which are optional. Like if I type in data here, you can see that it's data with a question mark. Right, so we need to properly unwrap this as well. We can unwrap it using if let again. So I can say if let data equals data, which is basically unwrapping data for us like that. Now this code only runs if data is successfully unwrapped. And so this is going to be definitely very important because we don't want our data, if there's no data that actually loaded out and we try to do operations on data that doesn't exist, there's going to be an error eventually. So it's very important that we have this. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to do one last thing, which is another type of um, error handling type of thing. You notice, especially with data, especially when you're working with the internet, you always want to have um, error handling because if there's a problem, you know, there's so many steps where things could go wrong or there could be an error such as no internet or such as some websites down or maybe the data, you know, there's an error in the data. So there are all these different things that we have to keep in mind. And so in order to do some error handling on the next part, we're going to do a do catch statement, right? So I'm going to do do catch and I'll just do let error and then I'll just print the error. So what this code does is it basically does what's inside of the do statement. And if there's some sort of error, it's going to catch it. It's going to um, create a variable called error which describes the error, and then we're simply going to print out the error here. So now what do we do inside of the actual do statement? Well, we're going to do let, and I'm going to call this the actual, um, I guess I can just call this user data, and I'm going to pretty much do something very similar over here. In fact, I'll, I'll keep it kind of similar, and I'll say uh, let JSON decoder equals JSON decoder. So we need to actually create a decoder object, just like we did down here initially, right, where we were reading the JSON from a file. Now, because we're reading it from the internet, we still need to decode that JSON into a array of objects. So I'm going to create a JSON decoder, 
And then I'm going to say let data from JSON equals try JSON decoder, and I'm going to use the variable that I created, dot decode. And now I need to decode my actual data. And so I want to, what am I trying to get as a result? I'm trying to get an array of user data objects. So I need to say a, simply an array of user data. But then in order to refer the actual type, like that as a type, I have to do at dot self, dot self. And that refers to, you can see user data dot type here. And then what am I trying to decode from? I'm trying to decode from my data variable up here, just like that. So now I have this J, uh, data, dot JS, or data from JSON variable created, which is going to have an array of user data objects. All right, so then the last thing I'm all, the only thing uh, now that I have to do is I need to just do um, print data from JSON, uh, data from JSON. All right, guys, now the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run my code. So if I run my code here, and I check my log, you can see that it pulled all of the JSON data from the internet. And then from here, you can display it on a table view or in any other way you want, such as a view controller. So uh, that is how to get JSON data from the internet. So again, all we did was we found a link using URL, and then we used URL session.share.data task, and then we have data response and error. Right, and also make sure there are parentheses here. I had to cut the video and then restart in our no because I had to make a uh, change which is add these parentheses, and um, that's pretty much it. So, again, thanks for watching. Um, hit like if you liked it and subscribe for more content. I will be in the description in case you need any help. Timestamps, of course, in this video will be in the description in case you need to skip back to one specific part. And the part one video, in case you missed that, will also be in the comment section below. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. And as always, have a good day. Goodbye.